Welcome everybody. This is lesson eight for our muscular system unit. And once again, we're doing our deep dive into everything that is neuro, neuron and muscles and all the cells. Um, so we have gone through a neuron firing and we've talked about how that's propagated down the axon. And we are finally returning to the muscle today. And so we're gonna talk about what's known as a neuromuscular junction. And I'm pretty sure if you think about it, you can figure that word out, even though it sounds really big. Uh, neuro mean, meaning neuron, and muscular meaning muscle, and junction meaning where the two meet. So neuromuscular junction is where that neuron and that muscle meet. So what we have to do is we have this signal coming from our central nervous system out to our muscle, and it reaches the end of that nerve. And we have to get that signal from the neuron to the muscle cell and that is harder than it first appears because action potentials spread really easily across a membrane but only on a single cell it doesn't really work to go from one cell to the next so we need a way to transmit that signal from one cell to the next so that is what we're going to do here All right, here we go. So a lot of diagrams in this. So this yellow thing here is our neuron, the end of our neuron. So that's the axon coming down and then it branches and we get into these, what are called presynaptic terminals. The actual intersection between the neuron and the other cell is called a synapse. So you have presynaptic. So over here, we can see the, the end of our axon. This is our presynaptic terminal. And then sometimes this muscle membrane here, the sarcolemma, is called the postsynaptic membrane. Um, so we, and then the gap in between is referred to as known, it's known as the synaptic cleft. So that little spacing there is really important. And what we're going to talk about is how this signal gets down to the end of this and then jumps from this cell to this cell. So here's the basic plan. Action potential coming down the neuron. We have the sodium gates opening, the potassium gates opening, all of that fun stuff we've been talking about. And what happens when we get down to this presynaptic terminal is that influx of sodium. So, you know, there's sodium gates up here. The influx of sodium is going to uh, bring the change the electrical signal on the membrane, which triggers these gates. This is the first step in this, is that these, these calcium channels open up. And those calcium channels open up, allowing calcium to flow in. So um, what's not shown in this is, of course, before any of this happens, we're actually pumping calcium outside, out of here to the outside of the cell. So again, they're, it's very similar to the sodium situation. There's a lot of calcium on the outside, very little on the inside. So we open these calcium gates, and of course, calcium comes rushing in. Okay. Um, as calcium comes rushing in, the what is going to happen next is that we are going to see those calcium ions start to make changes here to these little things called vesicles. A vesicle is a fancy name for a small membrane sac of something. So this um, sac happens to be full of a chemical known as acetylcholine. You can see that right down here. Acetylcholine is often abbreviated as ACH, and we sometimes refer to it as ACH, which I know sounds funny, but it just makes it easier to talk about it because acetylcholine is a big word. So these synaptic vesicles are filled with acetylcholine. And that is actually the messenger molecule. And what's going to happen is as the calcium comes into this cell here, it's going to make these vesicles start to drift and move towards the membrane. And when they move towards the membrane, they are going to start to pop, essentially. They're going to spill their contents into what's known as the synaptic cleft, this very narrow gap between the cells. So now we have this space in here that is starting to fill with acetylcholine, this messenger molecule. 
And the messenger molecule is going to, by simple diffusion, but again, this is such a small space, this happens very quickly, the acetylcholine is going to drift across and it will bind with these receptors on the opposite cell. When it binds to these, uh, these receptors on the opposite cells, those receptors actually trigger another gate to open. And those gates are sodium gates. So we will see that the sodium gates, as soon as these are the acetylcholine molecules here, okay, over here as well. And once the acetylcholine binds to this, that actually is the key to unlock this sodium gate. And very similar to the neurons, we have the sodium potassium pump setting up this situation where there's tons of sodium on the outside here, there's potassium on the inside. But what is going to happen is as soon as we open those sodium gates, sodium is going to come rushing in. Okay. And what essentially happens is the exact same thing that happens on the neuron, which is that we depolarize the cell. Um, and as we depolarize the cell, we start to send an action potential along the membrane of the muscle. So that is the key to getting that signal to the muscle cell. It's that neurotransmitter, that acetylcholine is incredibly important to transmit the signal from one cell to the next, and you can't do it any other way. Um, this is a summary of the whole process. Calcium comes in, synaptic vesicles drift over here, they pop into the synaptic cleft, acetylcholine builds up in here, we, the acetylcholine binds to these receptors, we open up sodium gates, sodium comes rushing in the cell, and we depolarize the muscle cell. I know that was fast, but that's the idea. And we also have a nice little am animation. I've turned the sound off here, but I can sort of talk you through it here. What you're gonna see is the action potential is gonna be coming down here, it's that bright light. Obviously, it doesn't glow in real life, but it shows you what's happening. That action potential opens those calcium gates. You can see the calcium is now gonna rush into the cell. It's a super slow motion, of course. Now those synaptic vesicles are gonna to start to drift. And here they go, they pop, and acetylcholine is now released into this synaptic cleft, where it's gonna quickly go find our little receptors here. And when those receptors are found, we open up some gates, and now we allow sodium to rush into the muscle cell. And that causes an action potential along the muscle cell. There you go, it's glowing now. And that's gonna to start to spread out in either direction along the muscle cell. And oh yeah, the one additional thing that we did not talk about is the fact that you do not want acetylcholine to remain there. You have to get rid of it. It's this molecule called acetylcholine esterase, which is a mouthful, of course. But that is the molecule that breaks down acetylcholine and it diffuses back into the cell and then we repackage it. Um, if you remember, we talked a little bit in the one of the earlier um, notes about synaptic fatigue, one of the three fatigues, and that is by far the rarest. But synaptic fatigue is when you have this neuron firing so much that it dumps its acetylcholine in here, and it hasn't reabsorbed it yet, so you're actually out of acetylcholine for just a temporary time because it all gets recycled and gets rebuilt, and it only takes, um, you know, less than a minute to do that. So these things will eventually repair themselves and you'll get that acetylcholine. I know this is a difficult one, but um, we'll show you some more animations and I hope this helps. Thanks guys.